Can flat feet cause hip pain? If so, what do you do about that? In this video, we'll dive into the relationship between hip function and hip health. And more importantly, I'll give you actionable steps you can take today to start feeling better. Hey, I'm Max from Max Resnick Movement, your last stop for pain-free hips. Do you have flat feet, aka collapsed arches, aka overpronated ankles, or feet that do this? And do you have a sneaky suspicion that your flat feet might be the root cause for your hip pain? We're going to dive into this topic in this video. We'll first look at the relationship between the feet and our hips and see if flat feet can really cause hip pain. And later in the video, I'll give you a couple of exercises that can get your feet and hips functioning better together. First of all, I wanna give you some credit for landing on this video. Understanding that foot and ankle function can affect how our hips feel is not something everybody understands. Most people believe that if there's pain in the hip, that means there's something wrong in the hip. I've worked with many people in chronic hip pain. What I've discovered is that poor function in other joints is much more likely to be a contributing factor in their achy hip. So give yourself a quick pat on the back for making this connection. But if you landed on this video with some doubts and you're still not sold that the hips and feet are connected, let's do a little experiment. Get into a standing position with your feet shoulder width apart and both feet pointing straight. Now let's start rotating the hips internally and externally, going back and forth. The hips are the only joints we're trying to control in this experiment. Let the feet, ankles, knees simply come for the ride. What'd you notice? For most of you, you'll probably notice that the feet move along with the hips. Although we're not intentionally trying to move the ankle or feet, when we move the hips through rotation, the ankle and feet naturally move along with the hips. The more internally rotated your hips are, the more the ankles and feet collapse or look flat. And the more externally rotated your hips are, the more arched or supinated the ankles and feet become. This demonstrates how rotation in the hip causes a chain reaction down the body all the way to the feet. With this knowledge, it doesn't seem crazy that what happens at the feet affects the hips. Let's capitalize on this knowledge now with two exercises that help the hips and feet function better together. The first exercise I'm going to share with you is a exercise I coin hip external rotation foundations. The main goal of this exercise is to improve hip external rotation. As we've learned, hip external rotation causes the feet and ankles to supinate or arch more. This is what we want when we have collapsed arches. The beauty of this exercise is that it not only challenges the hips, but it also challenges what happens in the ankles feet when we externally rotate the hips. This makes it a perfect exercise for our purposes in this video. In this exercise, you're gonna place a strap around the knees, right above the knees, and you're gonna use a yoga block. And I'm using this black yoga block. I know it's hard to see because it's easy to press into. I do have a better yoga block that's brown, but it's pretty stiff. So have something you can really squeeze into. From here, you're gonna check your pelvis to make sure it's not doing anything weird. And then you're gonna relax the upper body. So what we're doing here is we're squeezing the yoga block with our ankles while also driving the knees out into the strap. Right, so this is going to work our external rotation in a very controlled setting. So we want to simultaneously squeeze and push with the knees, right? So we're squeezing with the ankles and pushing out into the strap with the knees. Squeezing the yoga block with our ankles and pushing out with the knees. And after every contraction, we relax. So we contract for two or three seconds, maybe four, and then we relax. And every time we relax, paying attention to what's relaxing, what was trying to contract, was it actually the hips and ankles or was it the upper body, the abs, 
the shoulders, the neck, right? So with every time you relax, when you contract again, try to really isolate the hips here with each contraction, right? We're squeezing with the ankles and pushing out with the knees. And that's what we're doing throughout this exercise, resting for a couple of seconds and then contracting again. And this is a great way I'm just placing my hands right here in my on my body so you know just to kind of help it to calm down right to encourage the upper body to relax and as I was saying this is a great way to really start teaching the body how to get better at externally rotating the hips right it's, your body is in a really good position here it's really safe it's really controlled oftentimes and I've done this with myself and clients when I first started out, we try to do these very difficult exercises for external rotation and the body is just not ready for it. This is a great way to get to the foundational aspect of hip and external rotation and really starting to learn and understand what it should feel like and what it, what function feels like. And one side of the hip might be stronger than the other. It might be activating more. Don't feel like you need to change anything with that. Just observe and pay attention because it actually could be what your body needs today and what your hips will ultimately need. Reminder to relax the upper body. Make sure you're getting this to the best of your abilities from the hips and not from the core, neck, or shoulders. We have about 15 seconds left. Let's do a few more cycles here if you can. And that's good for today. If you're liking this video, hit that like button, smack that subscribe button. It goes a long way for me to keep bringing you quality content. The second exercise I'd like to share with you is the triangle rocking chair. This is another exercise that helps the hips and feet function better together. It forces the hips to stay in a nice neutral position while we move the ankles and feet through a healthy range of motion. In this exercise, put a yoga block between your knees. You're gonna maintain a nice squeeze, not too much, but a nice steady squeeze throughout the exercise of that yoga block. Then relax the upper body, and now we're gonna focus on the ankles and feet. We're gonna go to a healthy range of motion here, going into plantar flexion, going on our toes. And then when we go into our heels, we're going into dorsiflexion and lifting our toes off of the ground like I'm doing here. For many people, other parts of the body are going to want to contribute. So it's important to really pay attention to what's happening with your body when you do this relatively simple exercise. Go slow, breathe, and pay attention. Do the shoulders wanna move towards your neck and elevate? Does the core wanna help? Do the hips have to get involved? Really pay attention to these subtle things in this exercise. Another thing to be mindful of is whether the feet move up or away from you in this exercise. When we don't have really good function in our ankles and feet, those feet slowly travel away from us. So nothing really to do just to pay attention to how you start the exercise and how you end. And if it's very obvious, or maybe the feet are moving too far away from you, just slide them a little closer to your hips during the exercise. Also, how difficult is this on the different muscles around the ankles? When you're going into plantar flexion, what do you feel in the calves and the front of the shin muscles? Same thing when we're going into dorsiflexion and going on our heels, what do we feel in those shin muscles? Is it like a very strong contraction and do the calves feel super tight? Not judging it, but just being mindful, you know, just trying to kind of add to the big picture here of what's going on in our body. Breathing. Relaxing the upper body. You got about 30 seconds left here. Stay. 
still squeezing that yoga block and just trying to get those ankles and feet and hips working better together okay that's a great job in this exercise as for programming you can easily work on these two exercises every single day I recommend spending about three minutes per exercise. And if you're looking for more exercises and want a full workout that you can do every day, sign up for my free hip starter course. It's a great way to jumpstart your recovery out of chronic hip pain. I'll drop a link to that course in the description box below. That's all I got for today. See you on the next one. Happy hips.